Where's your phone? Right here. Did you check it? Hello, everyone. Hello, hello. Hello. Good everyone morning. Everyone should be coming in, so come on in for a second. We'll make sure that everybody is up and online with us. Yes. Perfect. Let's meet again. Let's make sure. Praise the Lord, everyone. Come on in the room. Come on in. Welcome. 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 It's there. Right All right. Welcome. Welcome. Come on in. How do I get rid of this here? Just start casting. Click that. X. All right. Praise the Lord, everyone. So good to see you. Hi, Nicole Ash and Andy Ramish and Lori. Welcome this morning. Hello and welcome. Good morning. So good to see you. We're so glad to have you here. We have a little at home setup. Uh, hopefully, uh, let us know if you can hear okay. So we are making do with what we have here at the house instead of driving over to the church. Hi, so Johnny and Marie, good morning. We figured that uh, the warning to stay off the road was a good warning today. So let me just start out with that, and then we'll we'll move into some other things. But uh, we did cancel service today. Obviously, we felt like um, the reports all night long, we kind of watched it until this morning to make sure that the rain actually showed up. Uh, we did get several reports uh, that the roads were kind of just a sheet of ice, and the crews were, were out there. They were salting and trying to keep up. Um, don't know if they were able to keep up in all of the areas, but we have people traveling from, uh, from different areas. So we just felt that it was the best call, uh, to wait till this morning. We did since the storm did hit and was going to hit, uh, it's supposed to hit until directly after church. So it would have been when people were leaving church as well. We wanted to just make sure everyone was safe and keep you at home and go from there. We actually received a... Yes. We actually received a text that someone had already fallen on the ice today Correct. and had to get stitches. And so, um, so I guess it's a, I guess it's very, very icy out there. And so we would rather the snow because we can deal with snow, but uh, the ice is a whole nother story. So, uh, so thank you for uh, being with us on that decision and the text that we received that said, thank you for the right call. Um, you know, we, we do labor over it a little bit and we do want to have service and be in service together, but, um, this is what happens, right? Also, if you're online today and you are worshiping with us, we would ask that you just say something online to let us know that you are here. I do see a lot of people have already signed on. Hello, Winsox, um, Buenas Dias, Adriana, Diane Marie, um, Lizette, Buenas Dias, my friend, She's my amigo. Um, <laughs> I am learning um, Spanish and I'm doing very well. I'm very proud of myself. I'm doing awesome. So Nancy, we have everybody, a lot of people on right now, and it's very important that we gather together, even if it's online, when we have these situations and we're trying to do what's best for everyone so that nobody is injured or hurt or sick or... Absolutely. Absolutely. So I'll say my Spanish, que pasa ahí? There we go. All right. So, uh, so we just want you to relax. Uh, hopefully, you're in a you're in a good place where you can watch us and be with us. Um, my wife is going to be watching the chat, so she'll uh, it'll be a little bit of interactive, and uh, she'll post the scriptures as I as I bring them, and so that you can go ahead and be connected, and we'll try to do this. Oh my goodness, I'm loving it. Everybody, just keep keep communicating hey, with us. It great. makes us feel so much better knowing that you are online with us. Yep. Thank you. Yeah, we're uh, we're sitting in our living room, and uh, we've got the river behind us, and it's flowing like crazy. And so uh, it'll probably be icy later on, but it's, it's supposed to be warm too, and then cold back again. But we just want to invite the presence of the Lord into this house. And so, um, right where you are, why don't we just stop for a moment, and why don't we just pray before we do? Uh, I have a couple of announcements, but why don't we just go ahead and pray right before we begin? Uh, if you would just right, right where you are, just in your house, just go ahead and lift your hands and, and just begin to invite the presence of the Lord into your, into your home right now. Dear Lord Jesus, we give you glory and we give you praise and we give you honor. We lift you up right now, Lord, above all things. And we ask, Lord, that during this time that you will be with us in this place, Lord. And by this place, Lord, let it be us that is your place. Hallelujah. Wherever we are, whether we're here, whether we're in this state or this country, whatever homes that we're in, Lord, we just ask right now, Lord, that you just begin to move 
in a mighty, mighty way, Lord, right now. Hallelujah. Lord, I pray that your presence is as strong in every home right now as it is directly at the church. We give you all the glory and all the praise. And everyone said amen. Amen. We're going to worship for a moment. So why don't you worship with us? Hallelujah. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll do it so old school. We'll move the camera around maybe a little bit. But we'll, uh, we'll let you do some worship here for a moment. Amen. so great. Amen. Our God is so good. Um, so we are thankful that you're here. We'll uh, maybe do another worship one uh, later. I don't know. We'll see. Um, but uh, my wife will come back over here. We've got a couple of announcements, and then I do have uh, a quick word for us today that the Lord has been working on and some different things. Um, but uh, just so you know, next Sunday we will be in church. Uh, <laughs> so amen, amen. Uh, we, we have, uh, the beginning of the year, our very first service was a wonderful service. 
the Lord moved in a mighty way, and uh, we had a great time during the yeah. service. And then directly after that, people started uh, falling ill, and, and sickness started going around, and different things like that. Then the weather decided to try to do some stuff. And so uh, I feel like this is a good Sunday reset for all of us uh, at our homes to go ahead and, um, uh, number one, bring worship into our homes, but number two, to reset and uh, be ready to go. For the month of January, we've already talked about it, for the month of January, we are not doing any uh, really midweek services, okay? So uh, we have a new format this year. We'll be working in trimesters, okay? So this month is basically a month off for a lot of you, um, other than our first Tuesday, which uh, we had to cancel as well. Um, but, but other than that, this is kind of just a time period for us to regain from the end of the year, for us to focus on our, our personal walks with God. And then February is really going to ramp up. Uh, we met on this yesterday uh, with some people. And so February is going to ramp up our uh, life groups. And so it's going to be very, very exciting for that. Um, our life groups are going to be during the week. So every month, our first Tuesday, will still be all of us in the house together, worshiping, singing, eating, doing all of those things. And then um, the, the weeks following that, we will have all of our life groups meet. So we currently have um, our, our men's group will be, uh, a portion of our men's will be, men will be meeting, a portion of our women's group will be meeting one night. Um, another night we have our discipleship class, which we're very excited about that, kind of moving your discipleship to the next level. We understand, uh, we talked about this the other day, right? We understand that you can only do so much in a, a Sunday window, right? A Sunday window of time. And we were talking about, you were reading and you said, why did I, I, I know I've heard about this before, but why did I never go in depth in it? And, you know, it's, it's kind of, um, it's kind of questions. It's like, are we learning? And, um, it is, uh, number one, it shows the importance of us, of our personal reading, right. But it also shows the importance of our discipleship classes. And so that will be happening. And then we also have our, uh, divorce care, right. That'll be on Wednesday nights and, um, divorce care is a group to, that comes together and goes through all of the process that happens during a divorce or after or after exactly and so uh in the class that are in the group there will be people that are currently going through it there'll be people that have went through it many years ago um you know we i guess we're pretty cool with saying it and pretty open to it um you know my wife uh has been married before and and uh then she found me. So, uh, but my wife was married before and my wife went through a divorce and that was kind of at that time, which was many, many years ago. Right. right. Um, it was very, you know, we, we don't agree with divorce first and foremost, we don't agree with divorce. However, when it happens and if it happens, okay. Um, cause we don't want to say when, so if it ever happens and, and we don't agree with that, we want to make sure that the persons involved are able to receive healing. They're able to receive direction, right? All of those things. Yes. And so um, you know that even after years upon years upon years, there's still things that maybe people need to deal with. Yeah, this is a program that if, if you've been through any type of situation where you have gone through separation or divorce and there's emotions and feelings that you have been dealing with, this is a place that you can come and you are able and you're going to be in a very, very safe place. You'll be able to communicate with others that have gone through the same thing or are going through the same thing that can encourage you through this process. During these times, these are times that um, you can feel very alone and it's great to have someone that you can call up and say, hey, I just need some help. I need some guidance. And we are going to have some people that are filled with the spirit that are going to be able to communicate with you and help you and lead you and guide you. And we are really excited about this class. And we feel that it can be very beneficial for many of those that are sitting in the pew and don't know how to deal with what they're feeling and the emotions that they're going through. Amen. I, I think I think it's a great uh, a great piece because not only that, you know, we deal with uh, we deal with hurts, and I think for a lot of us, we feel like once we get past a certain stage, once we get past a month or a year or whatever healing time, uh, you know, people have told us, 
that everything is good, but sometimes we need additional resources in order to uh, in order to heal from that. Mm -hmm. And so this is going to be that. And then we have some other things in the work. Obviously, we'll, we'll constantly have um, men's meeting, groups meeting out, and, and ladies meeting. So we, we do all of those things. Uh, we have some other stuff. Uh, obviously, uh, Pastor Dwayne and the DYC uh, family, so they'll be helping us with some different things. We also have our uh, midnight prayers coming back this year. So, so we'll have those as well. And then we also, uh, one of the groups that we call a, a life group, and it really is, is our prayer team. So our prayer group meets every single uh, Saturday and they meet at 10 o'clock and it's really a great time to come together and, and worship. Right. Right. Especially during this time that we are in the hundred days to glory. I really feel that um, taking that time for that personal time to pray as well is so important uh, I can't even tell you how many times this week that I would have to gather myself before I walked into my place of employment because the Holy Spirit would come and visit me in my vehicle as I drove for my 45 minutes. Like, take every moment that you can to dig into the Word of God and to pray and to really try, try to draw closer to Him. When we draw closer to Him, He draws closer to us, and that's where our power comes from. Um, one of the things that I am doing during this time of fast is I am doing um, a little bit of the Esther fast, and I've been really I'm using myrrh. Um, Pastor Tim is don't jump the gun. So the so let let me tell you what she's talking about. So um, we we went from our prayer time. Um, so we're talking about uh, there is a hundred day movement, okay? And the hundred day movement is a hundred days to glory. So uh, we, along with uh, over two hundred other churches, yeah. right now are all joining together during the first 100 days of this year. So if you are on here, maybe you can throw up that link. Do you have that link in there? Um, and, I will be website? able to later. Okay. So we'll throw up the link later on, but we have a link to uh, to the site. Friday, and it, if you're there, if you could throw it up, that would be great. It's through Ruach Global Network, okay, RGN. And Ruach Global Network is just that. It is a network of pastors, mm -hmm. of churches, uh, that come together and really seek the face of God. And so during this time, we are doing a uh, 100 days to glory. Mm -hmm. So uh, normally we do, you know, fasts and we do 21 day fasts and different things. And those are all excellent and um, benefit uh, immensely. Uh, but before the uh, beginning of this year, I was really stirred. I wasn't finding that uh, rhythm to say that the 21 days was going to be it. Uh, and some other things. And so I was praying and then uh, through our network, which was great, all of a sudden uh, an, an intercessor in prayer mm -hmm. had a vision. That vision turns into a hundred day movement. And so we are working on that. So a hundred days to glory is this. There's four elements. All right. So for all of you that are here, I'm saying it again and again and good. We've got to get it in. Right. Get it the very first you. thing Amen. is a hundred days of prayer each week. hundred. Sorry. 100 minutes of prayer each week. So 100 minutes of prayer each week breaks out to be a little bit under 15 minutes, okay? And so here's why it's important to do that daily. I believe, you believe, we all believe, we know that daily prayer in your house uh, creates, a, uh, creates a want, creates a, a need, creates a desire to be in prayer daily, obviously. Yes. It's not just something where we wait till it's Sunday and then all of a sudden we come together and move, um, but this is a constant thing. The second part of that, so the first one is prayer, 100 minutes a week. The second one is the word. Get in your word mm -hmm. every single day mm -hmm. for 15 minutes, basically. 100 minutes a week is less, right under 15 minutes. And we, I, honestly, even in this first week, it's been great mm -hmm. because um, uh, we have a reading plan. So, so part of what we have on our website, part of the link that we'll be sharing with you, there is a reading plan on there and it goes out for each day. And so we've been reading the same portion of scripture each day. And, and honestly, it's portions in Genesis that we've probably all heard before, right. but when you're Many reading, when you're reading the full chapter and the chapter before and the chapter after, you're kind of doing what, uh, what uh, Aaron would call 2020 vision, 20 scriptures before, 20 scriptures after, right? Mm -hmm. um, those scriptures are taking new light and all of a sudden we're having questions and it's really great. Like 
we're, we're doing the Q and A each time after we meet at the end of the night. We're like, Hey, did, when you read today, did you know that? <laughs> uh, so, so it's really neat. And then my wife will walk around and talk the scripture all day long, the same, the same portion of the scripture that she gets excited about. So that's really good. So prayer is first, the word is second. The next one we believe is a hundred days of fasting. So if you have not started fasting yet, go ahead and start. Um, we do not expect you to give up food entirely for a hundred days. Uh, we have a mixture of things. Uh, we have people that are giving up food now. We have people that are going to one meal a day. We have people that um, are fasting for the first portion, full food, and then second portion, uh, they'll be eating. So different things like that. Um, but we, when, when I was asked, the simple answer is this, when I was asked about, um, what to fast, this was, this was my answer. My answer was what hurts. So what is it that hurts? You know, um, somebody said, oh, well, you're only fasting sugar and yeah, until you realize how many things you grab for that right. have sugar in it. And you're, you are denying your flesh. You're seeing that, wanting that, grabbing it and going, oh, wait a minute that would constitute under my sugar uh, fast, I'm gonna go ahead and, and not, not deal with that. So uh, some people are fasting caffeine, some people are fasting different things. And we believe that God is going to lead you and guide you into what it is that he wants you to deal with, what you to fast with. So why don't you go ahead and tell them a little bit about what's going on um, on, the, on the Esther side that, that you've been kind of searching out. Sorry, we have some people that didn't get the, the link this morning, so I'm trying to find um, that, those emails for them. But we are so sorry if you missed. Sometimes they get sent to the spam, so make sure you check your spam. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm following along with um, the Redemption Church, and I have been doing the Esther fast by using the purification for 50 days and then preparation for the next 50 um, and taking the Esther story and using the elements that she did when she was preparing herself for the king. So I have mirror all over my house from um, in the bedroom, in the bathrooms, in the toilet rolls. I anoint myself every time I read, every time I go into work, every time I pray. Like um, I'm taking this very seriously. And let, let me let me just make a statement really quick. Like this hundred days. Is just not for a hundred days. This is to right. train our body and to bring it under under conviction, under flesh. Make sure that we're humble before the Lord, yep. that we can continue with this practice for the next three hundred and sixty-five days. Something that we will get into a practice of doing. So as I've been worshiping and as I've been praying and as I've been anointing myself, I have anointed Pastor, I've anointed Jordan, I've anointed Victoria, I anointed Victoria's feet, I've anointed I've anointed Cooper. Um, I think it's very important that it, it's, it's symbolizing the fact that I, I'm really wanting to draw closer to the Lord. And Pastor Tim came down this week and he found me in the living room and had my book open and the Lord was giving me visions. Because listen, there is so much in the Word of God. And if you've been brought up and you've only know the basic stories, there's so much more. And as I'm reading, God is starting to just like separate, separate different things and be able to show me the word in a different way. And he gave me a vision of a big treasure box and all the people were rushing over and gr grabbing the most expensive treasure that was in the box. And the Lord was just like, but look at all the other treasure that was left. So I want to encourage you to really, really get into your word. If you are doing the Esther along with me, I have been posting videos on the P3 Connect, the women's group, and it explains the whole process. It gives us encouragement. We have prayer that's happening on there that I try to post for everyone to see. Um, please check out the link. Also, if you do not have a journal through your 100 Days of Glory, I am suggesting that you get you a journal and you journal every day what the Lord is showing you because I, there is not one page that he has not shown something to me in reading the word of God. So if you are just, if you just, listen, if you're just reading the word to check off the boxes, just stop already. Like it doesn't work that way. But if you're reading because you want the Lord to hide this word in your heart, then I suggest that you write down those things that the Lord is giving you and showing you during this 100 days of glory. 
And I believe that we are going to come out of this changed. And uh, we love you. If you have any questions, please get with me or Pastor Tim. And we will definitely answer as many questions as we can. Um, and can continue to keep praying. Yeah, and, and a lot of people ask about the fasting portion of it. And um, we will be talking about that uh, within the upcoming weeks as well, about the importance of it. But uh, fasting does bring our bodies under subjection. Uh, we understand that the, the, the flesh and the spirit are at war with each other. They, they, it's a tug of war constantly uh, between the flesh and the spirit. And uh, this is a way to kind of put our flesh in check and to get back to where we need to be. So, And then the very last thing, so we have prayer, word, fasting, and then generosity. 100 days of generosity. Uh, honestly, probably the, the hardest thing to do because... We know generosity as being, uh, you know, a donation yes. here or a donation there, or, um, but but things like being able to to pray and find a person's name in your heart that uh, the Lord has sparked for you to contact and reaching out to them and talking to them, uh, texting them, finding out where they're at does change things a lot, and um, and so we're gonna be we're gonna be looking at that. And are so you willing to go? that extra mile when the Lord asks you to do it. I, I was in a couple of situations this week where um, God asked me to do something and I was like, oh my Lord, that's out of my character. Um, I'm, in, I'm in a public place, but the Lord was just like, this is what I'm asking you to do. And what I didn't know that I was doing something that that person needed. And so be open to what the Lord is really asking you to do. Let your heart be stirred with what you're doing. Be, be be sincere, be intentional about what we're doing. Um, I, more than ever during this time that we are going through, especially with the, the peak um, that's happening in our, in our world right now with the, the COVID, um, we want to make sure that we are praying and we are asking the Lord to guide us and to lead us in, in all things. So make sure that you are, you're intentional about what you're doing. Amen. Amen. And everybody said amen. So please join us for the 100 days. Um, next week, we are going to start the signups for the life groups. So we'll have those going. And then uh, we're really going to get this thing cranking. It's going to be a great time. Find a life group. And yeah, uh, yeah we want you to get connected in a life group. Um, I Do I believe great things happen in a Sunday service? Absolutely. But I truly believe and have seen it firsthand that change happens in those smaller uh, type atmospheres in those in those settings. And so we're really excited about this. And uh, we already have ones working on for the next, uh, the second kind of trimester uh, portion of it. We, uh, once we can all start to eat again, we have one at a pizza place. And so it'll be a really good time. So it's going to be great. But uh, so everybody say amen. So go ahead and let us know. Go ahead and give us a thumbs up. Let us know you're still with us. And um, I do have a quick word that I want to bring today. So everybody's still on? Everybody's still happy? Everybody's still Everybody on. Everybody can still hear us. I know we got a bunch on there today. Yeah, we had, had a few that um, went to the church this morning because uh, the, the emails and the texts are going to their spam. So one. So, they went. so far, yeah. Okay, good. All right. Well, one out of everybody. That's pretty cool. <laughs> I, I we, were pretty low. we were pretty one, close. One's too many. <laughs> Amen. So uh, so we're so thankful that you're here again. Um, I, do, I do have a quick word for us um, just on something that I've been dealing with. Uh, I'll probably next week, uh, I want to talk about the tale of two trees, which is in the garden and uh, what happened there. And I think there's a lot of lessons to be learned from there. So we will, we will be talking about that. Um, and then we have some exciting things coming up. We have uh, some some uh, guest speakers that'll be coming up here in the next couple of weeks too. So we're excited about that. But um, so I, I was thinking of, I know this sounds really weird, but this is my my brain and I'm a little, I'm, I'm uh, this is carnal, but I'm a little bit more Marvel now than I am DC. But growing up, I was more DC than I am Marvel. Does anybody understand that? Do you get that translation? Okay, I didn't think of it. Um, so uh, Marvel is Spider-Man, DC is Batman. Okay. Does that make sense? All right. Sure. So uh, even though my last name was Webb and everybody used to call me Spidey and I loved Spider-Man and I had a Spider-Man sticker on my closet, uh, all of these different things, I, I always liked Batman as well. And so there was a character inside of Batman called Two-Face. 
Does anybody know who that is, right? Harry Dent. And so um, he had, uh, from a, an accident, uh, one side was disfigured, kind of the, what they portrayed as the evil side. And then the other side was untouched, portrayed as the good side. And he would use this coin and he would flip it based on his decisions. Every time he was making a decision of, uh, you know, the bad part, <laughs> whether or not to uh, end someone's day, he would flip the coin and let the coin make the choice of heads or tails. Um, and when I was thinking on that, just in a weird way, because I was reading some different things in the word, uh, I thought about the fact that a lot of times, uh, if we're not careful, we can kind of live our lives in that imbalance of knowing what to do. Um, and, and people are always like, oh, no, you know, that doesn't happen. Well, I just quoted the scripture that the flesh and the spirit are at war, right? They're in enmity with each other. So flesh is one side, spirit is another side. The coin has a head side and a tail side. We know that there is good and that there is evil. We know, right? So, so we understand these things. Um, and it's not wrong for us to be able to look at these things and understand that every decision, every choice that we make can have positive or negative, good or bad, uh, righteous or evil dis decisions, right? For coming from that. And so as I was looking at it more, I thought, wow, there's, uh, we were talking to someone yesterday about some things and I noticed it. And, and so I wanted to give you um, three real quick uh, shots where you can see in here uh, just little snapshots of the, of the word of where you can see how a decision caused God to react and what that reaction was. And so um, many of you here, I know everyone, everyone that's watching has always made the right decision. And I am thankful for that. Amen. Um, most of us in this room, you made the right decision, right? Married me, I married you, right? So good decision, right? So we made the right decision on that. Um, could have made the wrong decision, but no, we made the right decision. So, but I wish to say that we could look back and say, we have always made the right decision. Um, the fact of the matter is that's not always the way it is. And we were, uh, Actually, just before we go into this, we were talking about uh, how God blesses sometimes or even shows blessings or it looks like blessings in wrong decisions. Mm -hmm. But God wanted us to go in a different and a different plan. And we'll, we'll talk about that here for a second. So the very first one I want to look at is a, a gentleman in a family by the name of Abram, Abraham. OK, if you know who Abraham is uh, in Genesis 15 two through five, in this place, God had to adjust. Go ahead. I'm sorry, everybody's yeah. so caught up on the Batman and the Spider-Man link that they're all putting who they support as far as Batman and Spider-Man. That's why I love Connect Church. I, I, I figured you would. Yeah, go ahead and please let us know. Um, uh, obviously, the Marvel movie, the, Mar <laughs> the, current, the current Marvel movies are way better. But I'm so old, as a kid, I grew up with watching Batman with Adam West as Bruce Wayne. And so um, my daily show was the pow, boom, you know? So uh, so I'm a little bit older school than I grew than up with LTV, so. Yeah, you had no, no TV, so you have no clue who we're talking about, which is great. Um, it is great watching Marvel movies with you because it's like you've seen it for the first time. You're yeah, like, I enjoy it. who's that? I'm like, that's the Hulk. Uh, you yeah, know, so. says she's Spider-Man. All right. So let me first talk about uh, where uh, a decision was made and God had to adjust. That's just it. See, people always sit there and say, well, you know, uh, God doesn't adjust. God doesn't change things. Well, I'm going to show you an example of where there was a shift and a change, okay? So if you know the story of Abram, right, and Sarai, Abraham and Sarah, if you know the story of them, they were up in age, they were very old, um, that's what up in age means, right? <laughs> um, they, were, they were older, and so what had happened was, is uh, the Lord delivered to them the word that they were going to have children that they were going to have many descendants. And I'll read that portion. And um, this was 
this was a little bit of a shocker, a little bit out there, a little bit different, obviously, because Abraham even got to a place um, in Genesis 15, 2 through 5. I'll read it to you. God was telling Abraham how he was going to be blessed. But Abraham said, Sovereign Lord, what can you give me since I remain childless? And the one who will inherit my estate is Eli Eliezer and Damascus. And Abraham said, you have given me no children. And Abraham said, you have given me no children. So a servant in my household will be my heir. Verse four. Then the word of the Lord came to him. This man will not be your heir, but a son who is your own flesh and blood will be your heir. He took him outside and said, look up at the sky and count the stars. If indeed you can count them, then he said to him, so shall your offspring be. So here's the important part, the very important part. The important part is this. He said in verse five, look up at the sky and count the stars, count the stars. Okay. So why is that important? And you'll see because, so here he is, he lets Abraham know, Hey, you're going to have descendants. Your descendants are going to be like the stars in the sky, which would be a lot, I would think, right? If we look up in the sky and see the stars there, it's a lot. And then Abraham and Sarah went on with their way. And as you know, uh, they were not patient in waiting on what God was doing in their lives. They, they were, we can use a bunch of different terms. We can say they weren't patient. We can say they didn't wait long enough. We can say all of those things. But what it boils down to is they didn't trust the word of the Lord that a son was going to come through Sarah. So she made this great plan, and this great plan was, well, I'm going to give him a child through my handmaid. He'll have a child in which was born Ishmael. And so Ishmael was born. Then later on, we know Isaac was born. So now uh, the problem was there was an Ishmael and there was an Isaac, two of his children, one from his wife, one from his wife's handmaid or, or servant. But look at Look at Genesis 22, 17. This is still the word of the Lord. And it says, I will surely bless you and make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky, which we already heard, and the sands of the seashore. Your descendants will take possession of the cities of their enemies. So in, in verse, we saw that in verse 15, he was telling him, You'll have descendants, and they'll be the stars of the sky. Now, now, make no mistake, God didn't get it wrong, okay? He was explaining to him, if you trust me, if you walk this out and trust what I'm going to do, they're going to be as the stars of the sky. We as flesh stepped in because we didn't trust God's plan. Right. We made provisions to finish God's plan. Yeah. We'll figure out how to finish God's plan. We don't need God. We'll do it. Because God told us, so as long as the end gets there, that's okay. Right, right. So they did it. And now God has to change the wording and say, guess what? You still have descendants in the stars, but now also you have descendants in the sea, in the sand. And he was showing a definite, God was, and we won't get into that today, but God was showing a definite division in the fact that there was going to be Isaac and Ishmael. Right. And part of the parts that we were reading the other day, or we were talking about, um, is the fact that, you know, Ishmael gets thrown out. Abraham's even saying to God, well, what about Ishmael? And he's like, no, Ishmael is not the one I called you to have. And Sarah said, get, get her out of here. Yeah, Sarah said, get, get her out. But God's plan and intention was Isaac. Right. We, as flesh, interrupted and introduced an Ishmael into right. the story. Right. Hear what he's saying. And so now an Ishmael was there. And this is where I was talking about later. God actually said that he was going to cause blessings to still be on Ishmael. Right, right. But he didn't recognize Ishmael as the blessing. Right. He recognized Isaac as the blessing for people. And if we're not careful, and if we don't trust in God, I'm going to keep going back to that because you'll see how it goes right. throughout it. If we don't trust in God, we can hear from the Lord get a promise in our lives, and then no matter how we get it done, 
as long as it's done, we consider that a win. And God is sitting there saying, no, that's not a win. That's not what I wanted for you. What I wanted for you was to trust me and watch me do what I needed to do instead of trying to make it on the flesh side of things, instead of trying to make it something that you did right. and not what God did. Can I get an amen on that one if you're there, right? right. The, the, the blessing and the miracle, right, was the fact that in her older age, Sarah was going to have a child and she doubted God. She caused doubt to enter into Abraham. They made the decision together, obviously, because Abraham did the act with, with right? So, so, so we understand that that doubt and that no, that non-trust in right. God's plan right. caused a change of issues and caused right. God to kind of adjust his plan a little bit, right? Right. Everybody with me on that? Are you with me on that yeah, one? All amen right. And amen and amen. So, so I don't know, but I, I wrote this. How many times do we want to make adjustments to God's plan? And when I thought about that, I was like, oh my goodness, we hear this word, we get this promise and we just run with it. We don't even want to wait. Right. I, I've done it myself. Yeah. We don't even want to wait for God's promise. We want to continue to try to move it quicker. Yep. And then this is what happens then really we're not getting the full promise and the full blessings of God that is promised to us. Right. Because we are so busy trying to make it happen our way and not his way. Right. One of the things, one of, honestly, one of the things we learned when we stepped out to pastor was waiting. People think that we were like, first of all, we served for 20 plus years, mm -hmm. right? More than that, really our whole lives, we've been serving in some capacity in the church or, you know, other than years being out. So we waited 20 years as a couple. We did a lot of stuff in the church, uh, uh, you know, as far as being youth leaders and being this and being that. When the Lord told us that it was time for us to step out and plant our own work, right? it, it was about a year after that. We went to our leaders. We talked to them. We waited on God to begin to open doors. Doors opened. We were ready to jump. We started to jump. Um, God had a different plan. God made ways uh, in my Jonah experience to get me back to Pennsylvania and, yeah. and, and here we are. Um, but sometimes it's about the waiting. So let me, let me jump ahead real quick. Let me go to number two. I want to talk, get, get these out here. Uh, sometimes our decision makes God have to take action. And so very simply, uh, when we disobey the word of God, then sometimes he has to take action, right? And so it's very, very simple. We all know about Adam and Eve. And so I'm, I'm staying in the, the general area of the Bible right now. Um, uh, Genesis 3.23, right? So uh, in there, Abra uh, Adam and Eve are in the garden. Obviously, Adam was told, you can eat of every one of the trees. Don't eat of that tree. We understand this. Eve went there. The devil talks her into the fact that she needs to be equal with God. Next thing you know, a bite is taken. Adam takes the bite. And then in Genesis 3.23, so the Lord banished him from the Garden of Eden to work the ground from which he had been taken. Mm -hmm. Adam and Eve's decision to not follow God's plan, right? Right? Right caused God to have to curse the ground that that they were walking on so that we would have to toil the ground and plant and cause all of those things. Yeah. He he cursed the 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 woman in in birth and caused divisions and and uh, I mean there's so many different things that are there but but worse than that he caused it caused them to be banished from the garden of Eden because of their choice. And if we really look at it it boils back down to the same exact thing. They did not trust what God said to them. Mm -hmm. God said, don't eat of the tree. You can have everything else. Woo. That sounds like our lives, right? Yeah. Like God says, hey, you can have all of these things. You can have life and have it more abundantly. Or you can have that one thing that's forbidden. And we go after the one thing that's forbidden. And when things go bad, don't you love this? Right. He said, she said, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I love the fact that um, Sarah was the problem in my first example, yeah. and Eve is my problem in the second example. <laughs> so, 
There is a theme. They don't well, trust God right. and the woman. No. Um, you're going to get in trouble. I know. I am. Yeah, stop, the, stop the comments, all right? But so this second choice that we're talking about caused God to have to react. It caused him to act. He had to react. And what was the reaction? He exiled them from the garden. Mm -hmm. um, he didn't leave them. He didn't leave them, but he exiled them. Mm -hmm. And then the very last one is this, uh, is the Israelites. We understand, and this is even more in Joshua 5, 6, um, even more during this time. I believe this. Sometimes our decisions, so our decisions, can God cause, cause God to kind of question and have to change the plans? It can cause God to have to react. And if it's a negative reaction, we'll know it. But I think the very last one is this. God delays promises. So if you know the story of the Israelites in Egypt, they were enslaved. They were in captive. Um, the, the, the Egyptians had them. The Egyptians controlled them. In comes Moses through God, all these directions. Moses and Aaron come in. They get the people out. They free the people. The people are now free in a way. Watch this. This is very crazy, but they're free from being enslaved. They go into Egypt, but they're supposed to, or they, they, sorry, they leave Egypt. They're supposed to go into the promised land. That was their promise, was the promised land. Right. And all of a sudden, there's a problem. The problem is 12 spies go out. 12 spies come back. 10 of them say, whoa, 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 whoa. The giants are in the land. We can't take the land. Two of them said, our God will deliver the land to us. The people made a decision, did not trust the word of God that the promised land was there. And because of that, they made the decision not to go into the promised land. And God caused them for 40 years mm -hmm. to circle in the desert, right. all while their promise was still there. Hmm. Thank you, Jesus. Mm -hmm. And I really feel like this is probably the one that hits the most home because we get out of whatever bondage we're in, right? We get into a place where we feel free. We feel free in the desert, right? We're not, we're not having to build for the masters. We're not having to do what they do. We're able to build our own. We're able to do our own thing. But we're still circling around for 40 years and not living in our right. promise where the land is flowing with milk and honey. We're not living right. in that promise yet because of decisions that we made not because he's an evil God, not because he's a hateful God, because he's a God that says, if you're not ready for the promise, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to teach you how to trust me. And then it becomes a circle for 40 years. And many of us in our lives have had promises from God because we didn't trust, because we decided we know better, our eyes see the problem and the problem is the giants so we can't do it because of the giants and so we don't trust in God and then God causes us to have to go into a period of learning a period of school time where we have to walk in the desert for 40 plus years learning how to trust God before we can go back in and there's more deeper into there yet he, he he wiped out the whole uh any men that was in the military age, he wiped them all out. Why? That was to get rid of the, 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 the lack of trust that was there in the Israelite people so that they could go into the city that was promised to them. And so again, Joshua and Caleb trusted God. They still, here's the hard part, Joshua and Caleb were good guys. Mm -hmm. Joshua and Caleb said, we can do this. They still ended up having to walk the 40 years in order to get there. So be very, very careful about what happens. If God gives you a promise, where is your trust in God? Because the delay on that might not just delay you, but it may delay others around you. Yeah. And that can be very dangerous Amen. in the grand scheme of things. So very simply put, uh, and, and we'll come to, uh, I've got one more scripture to close on, but 
God had to adjust. God had to take action. And God delayed his promise. And, and I pray, listen, I pray right now, uh, before we read this scripture, I pray for you right now. Like, I pray that you look back and take inventory on some things in your life. Because you'll probably see one of these three somewhere along the way where we where we didn't follow God's plan entirely and decided I knew a better plan. Where we decided, well, it doesn't matter what God says, this is what I'm going to do. Or where we decided, well, did God really say I was supposed to do that? He didn't know about all the obstacles that I was going to face. I can't step out in faith on that. God obviously doesn't want me to do that. And then he delays the promise. And so I want to read this last scripture in Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. It's a very familiar portion of scripture. But if we look at these three examples, and we probably look at our own lives and the times that things have changed, it has probably been because of lack of trust to God. Mm -hmm. We have somewhere along the way allowed men to whisper into our ears. Mm -hmm. We've allowed our eyes to see more yeah. obstacles than see the power of God. Yeah. We've allowed to, ourselves to hear the negativity yeah. instead of the positive voice of the Father who is in heaven, who loves us. We've allowed our flesh to become stronger than the spirit that is leading us and guiding us. Right. We shut it off. Amen. Proverbs 3, 5 through 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. We just had three examples of that, right? Yep. In all your ways, submit to him and he will make your path straight. Another translation says, he will direct your paths. I don't know what I can say other than this. We just looked at three very, very key examples that we read all the time in the word. We saw three great examples of where God said, this is a promise. This is what I'm going to do. This is how I'm going to get you there. All you have to do is trust in me. We as flesh did not trust God. Therefore, things had to adjust, had to shift, had to be delayed, all because we didn't trust God. Right. Right. And I'm praying in this new season that, wow, like new season, I mean by the new year, right? We're in the first part, as my wife said earlier, we don't believe that this 100 days is just 100 days and then we're done and we pack this t-shirt away and then we're yeah. done with the 100-day movement, right? This fun. is one-third of your year. It is the beginning and it will set the trajectory of your course yes. for the rest yes. of the year. Yes. This yes. will set how you wake up in the morning, how you fall asleep at night. This can alter the DNA of your daily activity and make it more infiltrated with what God wants in our lives. But all of that is great. But if we don't trust God in what he's doing in our lives, we are going to have everything from delay to changes to ramifications to decisions that he has to make against us. And so I'm praying right now. Listen. Yes, Microsonic. I believe that Ooh. God does delay it because of the fact that we choose not to follow after the Lord. And those are the reasons why he has to delay it. So exactly. Listen, exactly we, what he was saying. How many of us? I, I'm, I'm an example of that. We probably should have pastored many, many years ago. Yeah. But guess what? Because he's getting old. Yeah, I am. I am. I'm Moses. getting old. Yes, I'm, I'm not Moses, Sarah. That makes you Sarah. Sarah was still. beautiful, though. Yeah, but I Moses, that out. She it still gorgeous. makes you Sarah. So listen. <laughs> but even in my own life, I can say that. There are, I probably should have went into what we consider ministry as far as pastoring a church in that side much earlier in my right. life. But guess what? Money was too good and different things. And now that I look back on that, I go, wow, God, you never changed the plan. Yeah. In, in fact, you really want to know the truth of it. When I was in my mother's womb, before they knew whether they were boys or girls and could tell that stuff, right? When I was in my mother's womb, there was a, a gentleman that came to the church, prophesied over her when she was pregnant, said, you will have a son. He will be redheaded. Now, at this time, my mother was praying, let it be a girl, Victoria. Whatever you do, don't let and it whatever you do, don't let it be a redhead. If it's a boy... Don't let it be redheaded. I promise you, you can confirm it with her. And he prophesied over her that the boy would be redheaded and would preach the gospel. 
45 years later, we step out to do that. So there were probably ways, if I look back, and I can see yeah. those now just yeah. talking about them, there were times yeah, to... when, when God was trying to lead us into that, but I was too stubborn with my way mm -hmm. and doing things my way and not trusting in God. And so I, I'm praying, listen, I, I know this right now, and I don't know why I'm saying this or who's watching this, but you may be sitting with your spouse on the other side of the table, and you may still be considering leaving that person. I just got serious, didn't I? Yes. Good. I'm sick and tired of couples sitting in church, and then the next thing I know, we're having a meeting after it's too late saying we're leaving each other. Why? Because somewhere along the way, a decision was made, decisions were made, and they were against what God was trying to do in their lives. Yeah. And so I'm praying for every couple out there. I'm praying for every relationship. Yeah. I'm praying for every decision. I told the church this last week, and it's very dangerous. I told them, challenge everything. Mm -hmm. Well, the Lord gave me a vision. Okay, then challenge it. What does it mean? Challenge God? No. Challenge your view. Challenge your understanding of what God has told you. Yeah. Did Sarah and Abraham fulfill what God told them? Yes, they had a descendant. Was it the right plan at first for what God told them? No. Right. God said you two will have descendants, and they went and made it their own plan. And so we have to challenge and look at it and say, God, if this is what you told me, am I walking it out the way you want it walked out? Am I right. trusting you enough say and not it. putting myself it. into it? Right. Am I not making me right. be the answer to it and not allowing you to be the answer and get all the glory? Right. Am I, am I not listening properly to all the words that you said? You said that not to take of that tree, but why? Oh, I, if I take of it, then I'll know what you know, and then everything will be clear. But I, I need to trust you at your word, even if it looks like the right decision, even if others are whispering in my ear telling me it's the right decision. Mm -hmm. And then God, I need to I need to trust you even when my eyes my, my when my when my eyes see the giants and the obstacles when my ears hear everybody else saying we can't do it we can't do it that I would still trust you with all that I am and that you would not have to delay your promise for me. So I pray that all of you um, are hearing this. I, yeah, hope, I pray I, that yeah, I'm, I'm getting all the comments back, and I can see that people are connecting with what is being said today and i just want you to know this is things that you have read this week and that's why you're able to connect because the spirit of the lord is connecting and make it a living word to you and um, there's many people on here saying yes I, I i we need prayer and um we're going to pray for you and mm -hmm. uh yes thank you for those comments don't let us take a single step you're right outside of god's will and it's so easily done because our flesh is so strong. That's why we have to humble ourselves. And there, God gave me a, a personal word for myself, and he gave me one for the church. And the word for the church was humility. And I believe that God yeah. is trying to bring us to a, a place of humility to where we can humble ourselves and do what we need to do so that, the, so that the purpose can happen. What are we waiting for? We're waiting for the coming of the Lord. And we are preparing our hearts for that. So. Well, that's exactly what we're doing in this 100 days is humility. We already spoke it in the very first service. Yeah. There was there was humble after humble after humble in the first service, right? So we talked about that. Not only that, reading your word every day, praying. Praying is listening mm -hmm. to God and hearing. It's not just about us speaking. That's humbling ourselves. Reading the word is humbling ourselves under direction of the word. Fasting is obviously humbling ourselves to, and, and, and generosity, of course, is a, is a humble nature. So God is really doing something, and I just pray for everyone. Let, let's let's just right where you are, just let's just take a moment. Before we do that, I'm getting some requests over. Go for it. So let's go. go for it. Let's go over some of these requests. Um, Patricia, we are we are definitely praying for you and Lori. I, I see your request and and asking God to heal you of your headaches and um, hmm. your your. You're very tired. I want to ask that God gives you strength. Right now. Um, also, I know that uh, Pastor Stu and Pastor Hazel, we are praying for you. We know the enemy 
is coming against your bodies and we are going to speak healing, complete healing. I spoke that over Pastor Stu yesterday. I am believing for a complete healing in, in Pastor Jesus Stu name. in his in Jesus' yes. name. Yeah. Yes. There is no other yes. name but Jesus. Right. And I'm believing it. Um, also, uh, my mother is trying today to go to a hospital to get a blood transfusion. And I am praying that the doors will be open today for that to happen. Um, there has been many calls There's this many week others. of people yeah. who have been sick. Yeah, and, Vivette, and, Corey, and, yeah, got so many. Just so many that have been sick. And you know what? The Lord is going to bring us through it. Amen. And I believe that. So we want to make sure that we um, pray for all those things. Uh, hold on just a second. I want to make sure I'm getting everybody. If there are other things that you need prayer for, please let us know. We are praying all during yes. the week. I mean, we're all supposed to be praying 15 minutes a day. So please post those on the church. Minimum 15 minutes. Yeah, a minimum. Yeah, sometimes I go over a little bit about you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's something about the presence. That's what we're talking. There's something about the presence of the Lord. Um, let us know. Let us pray for your needs because we only have each other at this time in our lives. And we, we want to make sure that we're praying. Um, so Pastor Tim's Amen. going to go ahead and lead us in a prayer. Amen. Right where you are in your house as we begin to close here, um, if, if you feel that this word has helped you, um, here's a good way to do generosity today. Why don't you take this message and share it with a friend that may need it? Share it with someone that you love and know. Um, just go ahead and share it right inside their private messenger. You don't have to post it to their page. I, I felt that right there when I was saying it. Don't Don't post it to their page. You're not... You're not calling them out, but you're trying to, to help them in, in times of decision. And, and so go ahead and po post it to uh, their private message and share it with them and show them a little bit of love today. Show them not only that you love them, but ultimately that, that you love them because Christ loved us and that Christ loves them as well. And so right where you are, if you would just uh, begin to pray with us, I'm going to pray uh, a, a prayer of dismissal here. Dear Lord, we give you thanks Jesus, for your word you. right now, Lord. Lord, we give you thanks for this word going out. We give you thanks for um, all that we're seeing right now, Lord, in this time, all that you're leading us and guiding us into. Lord, we ask that our trust be at a new level with you, Lord. Let us, as we come to decisions, as we come to your promises, as we come to the direction of you, Lord, as your word said, let us trust in you in all of our ways. Lord, not just the ways that we feel are uh, fall under the church guideline or under the Christian guideline, but Lord, all of our ways, Lord, let us be led by you. Let us not lean onto our own understandings, Lord. Let us just trust in you. And Lord, we pray right now that when you begin to direct paths, when you begin to show us the straight way to go, Lord, hallelujah, that we would not waver, we would not question, yes, yes, but we would yes, walk yes, towards yes, it Jesus, in Jesus', Jesus name. name. Right Jesus. now, Lord. Hallelujah. Jesus, we Lord, we pray for so many more things. Yes. Lord, Lord, I pray right Jesus. now. If there's anyone on here that doesn't know you in a personal way, Lord, if there's someone on here watching that does not know you as their personal Savior, as the Lord Jesus Christ that you are, Lord. Hallelujah. I pray right now that you would begin to open up their ears and eyes. You would let them see and hear who you are, not only from this broadcast, but from those around them. And Lord, I pray right now, and we are open, Lord, hallelujah, to help anyone walk that walk, to learn who you are, to repent of their sins, to turn over their lives to who you are, hallelujah, and to give their lives to you and allow you the control. I give you all the glory right now, Lord Jesus. We give you all the praise. In Jesus name. Hallelujah, Lord. And we pray again for healings throughout this time, Lord. Yes. Healing to all Jesus. those that were mentioned, all those that have posted, Lord. Let, let your divine healing be exactly where they are, Lord. We cannot be there with them right now, Lord, and we're all at distances. But, Lord, begin to speak in their homes right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Jesus Amen. Name. We love you. We appreciate you. Um, go on to the 100 Day Glory page. We'll make sure the link is on there. Um, it, it's on there already, right? Go ahead and click on there, and you'll see um, a link. Last week, last Sunday, every Sunday night at 6 o'clock, they broadcast live. They're 6 o'clock Eastern. 
Last week was Corey Russell. It's amazing. Woo! Amazing. Mind blown. Holy we, Spirit was all in this Yeah, week. love Corey <laughs> Russell. Love what he does. Um, this Sunday, tonight, uh, at 6 o'clock, is going to be amazing. Amanda Crabb. And so we're excited about a word from her and what God's going to do. It's just another way for us to all connect together in the 100 movement with others that are that are connected and kind of all watching at the same time in Jesus' name. And... If you get a chance today, there's also, you can text to give. It is 84321. So there's two ways to give right now. I apologize. Our website um, is a little delayed. I think you can give on Facebook by clicking the get to know or link there. It'll lead you. So. Um, but there's two real ways. Text 84321 and it'll follow you through or the app. It's the Church Center app. Church Center and when you go on there, you just put in connect um, or you put in the area code where you are and connect, find connect, and you can give directly to connect. We thank you so much yes, for your support. Yes, Obviously, yes. Um, just because we didn't have live church doesn't mean that the gas company is going to give us a week off. And so anything that you can do, we appreciate and love. Uh, we're so thankful for you. We thank you for your generosity. We thank you for your love. We love you. We are praying for you. We are reading the word with you. We are trusting God is going to do great things. May you have a wonderful week full of many blessings. May you walk in the ways of the Lord this week. May you listen to his voice. We love you. Have a wonderful day. Love you all. Love you all. See ya. We keep waving bye to everybody. Yep. Keep it going. Uh -huh. I see all the hearts of love. We love you. We love you.